gather around friends new and old and welcome to the powwow podcast i am your host david and i am your other host philip well hello philip it's nice to talk to you today i'm trying to think of a way to open this episode that doesn't talk about movies or the oscars because we know we're going to spend the rest of the episode talking about uh the hottest flicks coming at you or have having come at you last year to be awarded this year uh um <laughs> So I'm going to tell you a little story, Philip, about what happened to me this week. Okay. I got reprimanded at work. Did you? I did. I did. I got told off because apparently some of my colleagues, I call them colleagues, some of the permanent teachers, the full-time teachers at the school, one of them, there was a few things. Apparently, there the instructions left for me as a substitute teacher were not followed fully, and the teacher had to catch up the students uh, the next class. Now, my instructions are very simple, right? My job is very simple when I when I sub. You know, I do other things as well. But when I sub, the job really is take attendance, read instructions. Students do their thing. I make sure that they stay on task or do my best to make sure they at least appear like they're staying on task. And then if a fire happens, I get them out of the building, right? That's my job. And even then, if there's one who's lagging behind, just shoot them in the leg and let, them, let nature take care I, of it. Yeah, survival of the fittest. So... That's my job. It's pretty simple. There's not a lot to it. I do exactly that. I read the instructions as they're written, and I make sure the students uh, are not messing around. So if the instructions were not followed, it's either a problem with the instructions or it's a problem with the students. And I can't help that. I cannot watch their laptop screens the entire class. I can't do it. It's impossible. If they want to mess around, they will mess around. If they want to procrastinate, they will procrastinate. Either the problem is with the instructions or the students just did not or do not do not want to understand the stakes. The other couple things that I was told off for, well, <laughs> one of uh, one of the teachers apparently saw me with my feet on the desk and I was Ooh. like, you know what? If I was a full time teacher, would that be a would that be a problem? If I was like teaching with my feet on the desk and students were engaged, would that be a problem? No. But because I'm a substitute teacher and what I'm doing, actually, I'm not teaching them. Some Suddenly, because of my feet are on the desk, that's a problem. And then the last thing was that I told some students to shut up. And apparently I was overheard. And I, uh, you know, obviously, that's very, it's a very rude thing to say to a bunch Severe of teenagers. Severe and harsh. I know, but I was telling some other teachers who, who I, I know better about it. And they were like, what? I tell my students to shut up all the time. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I know, right? How else do I get these kids to, to, to shut up when, when I'm at the beginning of class and I'm trying to take attendance and they just won't be quiet. So I tell them to shut up. And you know what? The students are okay with it. They laugh it off. Some little grumpy ass teacher decides that it's a big old problem. Well, at this point, yeah. I have to ask, did you uh, come back at the person reprimanding you with these warranted no, concerns? Not. Like, why would I? No, I mean, oh, okay. obviously, I defended myself where it was uh, applicable. Sure. Uh, and and I, I, why why would I? I I sort of went along like I was like, oh, no, yeah, no, I, I, I understand. I understand. Oh, well, I'll try to do blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, I'm like, eh, do I care about this job? No, I don't. <laughs> do i plan to be here much longer absolutely not so here we are here we are i'm over it I, as, as i can tell it, it certainly Little hasn't lingered right whatever. to them right yeah. to them uh my workplace fiasco this week i did the unthinkable the stupidest thing which always makes me feel horrendous to my soul david i sent an email to a person i don't know since i'm in a big company i sent it to a person i do not know and I attached the wrong forwarded email. Now, there was nothing incendiary or insidious in the email that I did send. However, when I'm saying, hey, I didn't find an appeals process within this email, and then the person has to come back in very gingerly, very, very with a finesse this side not seen since a tightrope walker comes back and says, please explain to me how there's not an appeals process for an interview process uh explain to me how that works and i said you know what you got me i sent you the wrong email please accept my humble humble palm in my face and as well as the correct email that i meant to forward you and we shall see how that works but god there is nothing more i than i hate making a complete and utter fool of myself 
well, really to anybody, but also to somebody I don't know. That as the first impression, never a good sign. Well, not a great week for both of us, for either of us. And uh, well, let's look forward to the week ahead, the lead up to the Oscars and move on to the main topic. And this is all I think I can copyrightedly sing as uh, as it is probably not within our, our rights to go any further for a song that you may or may not have heard before. But yes, it is the big Oscar blowout. Welcome to this episode. <laughs> we are ready to go down the line and self-gratify ourselves more than anybody else and give you the who's who who's supposed to win, and who are the favorites of the upcoming 2022 Oscar-nominated field. Now, we are only going five categories deep into this year's. We're going to try and trim it back, hold ourselves We're back. We're addressing the big five. The big five, as as most people would know them. Yes, the big five. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll do it since David has definitely seen all of these films uh, within these five categories. We will be leaning on his uh, wisdom, his intelligence and his artistic savant that is deep within himself any and every time he watches these films. We will be leaning on him for those as we navigate ourselves through each and every one of these genres. I will ask him to name the nominees, ask him for whom his favorite is, who his personal favorite is, and then ask him who he believes will win. I will confirm or deny who the current odds and betting favorite is to win each and every category. Doesn't mean it's a lock for sure, but just at least shows us who is being leaned on, as well as we will bookend it by me offering David a question about each and every field that I have, which which winner they would hold, uh, which winner within each category would be for an applicable topic of my choice. You'll get it as we get there. David, are you ready to get into this, delve into (laughs) this field I'm ready. I'm ready as your resident expert here. Yes. Do you have your tuxedo buttoned all the way, martini in hand, ready to stir your olive like a gentleman? Yes. I'll button my... Yep, there we go. Buttoned up. (laughs) All buttoned up. All right. We shall start with no particular order with Best Actor. David, whom are the nominees? Best Actor. Well, we have, first of all, Javier Bardem... Being the Ricardos, Benedict Cumberbatch, The Power of the Dog, Andrew Garfield from Tick, Tick, Boom, Will Smith, King Richard, and Denzel Washington, The Tragedy of Macbeth. Now, out of this field, who is your favorite, David? My favorite. My favorite from this, I would have to say, there's a couple that I would be okay with winning. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, Andrew Garfield, I would be okay with. I mean, even Javier Bardem, I would be okay with that. My favorite probably is Will Smith, which is uh, like if you told me last year, oh, your favorite for best actor next year will be Will Smith. I mean, I think Will Smith is a great actor, but to be favorite for best actor, I wouldn't have called that last year. But he is he, a great performance as Richard Williams, uh, the Williams sisters father. I thought it was uh, I thought it was a great performance, uh, beautiful character work and very, very genuine Great work by Benedict Cumberbatch and Andrew Garfield, as well as uh, Javier Bardem. Denzel Washington is the why the heck? Ugh, <laughs> why is he in this field? Nomination. Wow, terrible performance in my opinion. A terrible, uh, done, terribly done Shakespeare. It was this this obsession, this modern obsession with doing Shakespeare your own way, which like is so detrimental to the work itself. You end up playing the character in this weird way that doesn't... Act, you, you miss the truth. You miss the truth of the role. First of all, Denzel Washington is way too old for this role. He's in. He's 67 like or six, something like that. He's really old. Far too old to play uh, Macbeth, who should be, in my opinion, in his 30s. So, and, and, and it was just this overthought and underdone performance. He was like, half the time he wasn't even acting. He overthought it, underdid it, terrible. I think the favorite to win it's between Andrew Garfield and Benedict Cumberbatch. I'm going to go with ben- Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, I think, is the favorite to win. But my favorite was Will Smith. 
Denzel Washington, a whopping 67 years old, looking quite good for his age, but certainly not 30. Uh, the best actor you said who uh, the Academy would be favored to win this would be Benedict Cumberbatch, and he is second favorite currently. But the favorite is Will Smith at minus 1,000, so a prohibitive favorite to win, which coincides with your best actor, your personal best favorite actor, I'm mine as well. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. I might place yes. a bet on that. Yes, you should. And I, too, agree with you. Will Smith it was my favorite of these performances that I saw. Now, my burning question to you, David, which of these actors would you want to hang out with for a full 24 hours on a Saturday? Ah, oh, man, that's a tough question. Once more, the nominees, uh, the nominees. Yeah. Yeah, the nominees are going to be Will Smith, Benedict Cumberbatch, Andrew Garfield, Denzel Washington, and Javier Bardem. And this is actually a loaded category for this. I think I think the only the only one I don't really feel that strongly about hanging out with is Andrew Garfield, to be honest. Wow, like, and he's of your age. Sure, well, yeah. Closer, but, I mean, closest. I, I would want to spend a spend a day probably with Will Smith of of all of these guys. But Benedict Cumberbatch would be so much fun. And so would Denzel Washington. I would love to learn from Denzel Washington. Just maybe not Shakespeare. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's go to the next category. Best original screenplay. And David, the nominees are... The nominees are Belfast, Don't Look Up, King Richard, Licorice Pizza, and The Worst Person in the World. Now, David, which of these was your personal favorite? My personal favorite is The Worst Person in the, in the World. It is a Norwegian film. I watched it the other day. Oh, it is phenomenal. It might be my favorite film from 2021. And I'm wow. guessing, so spoiler alert <laughs> for the rest of this main topic. The Worst Person in the World is a phenomenal film. And it's, it's, it's one of those slow burn indie films, but it is so good. The writing is phenomenal. Uh, I, cannot, I cannot fault it at all for its, the, the, the screenplay itself. The writing is just, just, so real, just gorgeous, and and uh, the acting as well. I mean, obviously, that's not it doesn't really play into screenplay, but this movie is so good, and, and I, I really think it has to go as an original screenplay. The worst person in the world is absolutely my favorite. The favorite, I think. I mean, the the, the Academy often sort of looks past these these uh, these international films. I think it's going to be Belfast, even though that technically is an international film. It's a British director <laughs> and and. Irish actors, Belfast, I think, will be the favorite. Honorable mention, Don't Look Up. I think Don't Look Up is a terrifically written film. Very unique. And it could easily be the favorite as well. King Richard and Licorice Pizza, also great, great screenplays. King Richard, probably the weakest of the bunch. Just fell, falls into a lot of cliches, but, but I mean, such is the nature of biopics. So I would say Belfast is the favorite, but by far, by far, the, the favorite for me is the worst person in the world. Well, the worst person in the world is actually at the bottom of this category as far as betting is concerned. Which at is a plus, just so wrong. It's so that's so wrong to me. It is a a brilliant film. It is tied with King Richard for being the bottom two in this category. However, uh, this is the only one uh, that we will be covering that has an undecided favorite. Really, a licorice pizza holds a slight lead at plus one hundred, but Belfast is right there at plus one thirty. The next one being Don't Look Up at plus five hundred. So it really is a two horse race here at Belfast or Licorice Pizza as far as betting is concerned. And I, I got to be honest, I, I didn't see much. I've only seen Don't Look Up out of this out of this category. So. You saw King Richard, though. Oh, I, I, you know what? I did see King Richard, and I, I just didn't see it as a contender for this per se. So, we'll, yeah, uh, no, we'll I didn't that. either. I didn't either. But uh, that's, I'm very disappointed to hear that the worst person in the world is is so low on on that list. Yes, quite low. It would it'd be astronomical underdog story if it were to win. Now, to get to my Philip category, an award question here, David. Which screenplay out of these would you be most likely to put as reading material? In your bathroom. Again, we've got Licorice Pizza, Belfast, Don't Look Up, King Richard, or The Worst Person in the World. Now, you can take this one of two ways, David. You can take this as entertainment for your guests that you are entertaining while they are doing their dirty business, or you can have it as ammunition should you ever run out of toilet paper. <laughs> oh, I didn't even think of it like that. Uh, no, I mean, I don't hate enough of any of these screenplays. Not that I've read the screenplays, but I don't hate any of them to the point where I would want to wipe my ass with them. But 
No, I mean, the worst person in the world, as, as even though it's my favorite, I think I would choose Don't Look Up. I would choose Don't Look Up because it is funny, just hilarious, in fact. And if I want to if I want to have something in the bathroom to read, it would be Don't Look Up. Although I, I guess I don't really want my guests just hanging out in my bathroom because they're reading. This <laughs> but I guess I would choose Don't Look Up. All right, let's move along to the next category, Best Actress. Now, the nominees for this category are... The nominees are Jessica Chastain for The Eyes of Tammy Faye, Olivia Coleman for The Lost Daughter, Penelope Cruz in Parallel Mothers or Madres Paralelas. That's a difficult one. Uh, Nicole Kidman being The Ricardos, and Kristen Stewart from uh, Spencer. Now, wow, uh, this is uh, this is jam packed with. There's a couple character performances here. Three, in fact, Jessica Chastain playing uh, Tammy Faye. Uh, Tammy Faye, what is Tammy Faye Baker? Uh, Kristen Stewart. Uh, Kristen Stewart playing Diana Spencer and Nicole Kidman uh, playing um, Lucille Ball in Being the Ricardos. Uh, all three very very well done. Kristen Stewart, I felt was I. I will say uh, right off the bat, I think she will be the favorite, not my okay. favorite, but the favorite uh, playing Diana Spencer. She was very good, very, very good. But it kind of felt like it it sat on the same level throughout the entire film. Her acting, I will say, like the, the energy felt the same throughout the entire film. N- Nicole Kidman, great performance, but maybe it wasn't just quite great enough. Like no, there wasn't enough there for her to to really win Best Actress, you know. And then Jessica Chastain. Very strong, very, very strong, but hard to compete with Olivia Coleman in The Lost Daughter. She was my favorite for a while until I saw Penelope Cruz in Parallel Mothers, a um, Pedro Almodovar uh, film, and it is just a gorgeous one. Of, again, like probably up there with the worst person in the world in, in terms of 2021 films that just absolutely ate my heart. It, uh, her performance is, is phenomenal. She should win. She really, really should win. But I'm reminded of two years ago when <laughs> uh, Pedro Almodovar had a film called Pain and Glory. Oh, yes. And uh, Antonio Banderas was was uh, was nominated for his lead role in that film and lost out to a, a, to Joker, to uh, Joaquin Phoenix. And really, Antonio Banderas was far better. I, I wanted either him or Adam Driver to win, but obviously he didn't. And I think that Penelope Cruz will be snubbed Again, and it's very sad to say she should, she really should win, but I think it'll be Kristen Stewart. Very strong performances all around, though. Well, you will be horrified and disgusted to know, David, that Penelope Cruz resides as a distant, distant underdog here at plus 2,500. Everybody else. Disgusted, but not surprised. Not surprised. And it's very sad. She is at the bottom of this category currently, uh, with Jessica Chastain being the current favorite at a minus 200, the only the only um, negative uh, or, I guess, favored person here. The rest of them are plus 350 with Nicole Kidman. Olivia Coleman, your, your, uh, your old favorite, lies in the middle there at plus 700. Same with Kristen Stewart. Uh, and now we get okay. to our burning Philip question here, David. Which of these actress, actresses do you think you would call on to break you out of jail? Again, we've got Jessica Chastain, Nicole Kidman, Olivia Coleman, Kristen Stewart, or Penelope Cruz. Wow. Break me out of jail. I don't, I don't, I guess maybe Nicole Kidman. Uh, I think she's among the oldest and maybe she's had some experience breaking people out of I don't know like I guess Nicole Kidman I'm just I just feel like she's got more life experience maybe she's gonna have more bright ideas I oh. don't know <laughs> that's such a weird question <laughs> all right I I didn't know where you would take it so that's why I wrote it let's go to our our uh our second to last category here best director in a film of 2022 David who are wow. the nominees the nominees are Kenneth Branagh for Belfast uh, I pro- apologize for the pronunciation, but Ryusuke Hamaguchi for Drive My Car, Paul Thomas Anderson for Licorice Pizza, Jane Campion for The Power of the Dog, and Steven Spielberg for West Side Story. Now, I've said in the past already that I thought Steven Spielberg did a terrific job with what he had, which was a 
crap fest of a musical. He did a great <laughs> job. He did a great job turning that crap fest and making it look nice and getting good acting performances out of the actors that he had. And good job, Stephen. But I, I just can't. I, I couldn't possibly acknowledge the brilliance of Steven Spielberg in amongst the pile of dung that is West Side <laughs> Story, the musical. But it's such pretty dung. It, no, a flower grows out of a pile of shit. It's still a pile of shit. <laughs> All right, so so we're left with four other movies. <laughs> uh, Kenneth Branagh, Belfast. Uh, great direction. Great film. Not my favorite film. It didn't touch me the way I think it touched a lot of people. Drive My Car. Japanese film. And again, I'll mispronounce this name probably. Ryusuke Hamaguchi. What a film. It is three hours long. It's a slow burn, but but it is beautiful. It's a beautiful exploration of human grief and human emotion and and human relationships. It's very, very good. Paul Thomas Anderson, Licorice Pizza, is probably, in my opinion, the one that will be the favorite. I think that the Drive My Car should win for Best Direction. Uh, the Japanese film. I think it was it was again up there, probably top three, <laughs> along along with along with Parallel Mothers and uh, and the worst person in the world. All foreign films, all international films. So that that should uh, that should tell you something. But uh, I think Paul Thomas Anderson should, would be the favorite for Licorice Pizza. There is something to be said for the power of the dog, though. Jane Campion. She is the only female nominee. And obviously that holds some sway and like, I thought the direction was phenomenal in that film. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be upset if that won, but I did think drive my car was superior. Well, you mentioned that she's the only female in the field, but she is an overwhelming favorite, David. This is by far the best, yeah. the, the like the worst odds, like the the biggest favorite from the field that we can find, uh, especially in where we're going. Minus five thousand, meaning that you have to bet five thousand dollars in order to win one hundred. She is an overwhelming favorite here, David, to win. You know, now as I was talking, as I was talking and saying that you know she's the only female nominee, and the Power of the Dog was. Really really good you know i get I, I would say my mind changed a little bit i i think like the, the academy does is these days playing to to what is expected of them uh in terms of progress and equality and getting more women into the, this arena into the film industry i think it's very important and so it makes sense it makes sense that that the power of the dog would be the favorite i don't think it was the best directed film i i, I that, that's just my honest opinion it would be back to back directorial wins uh of course last year's nomad land chloe uh, uh chloe zhao chloe zhao thank you <clears throat> excuse me uh won last year so that would be uh, a good feat for the oscars to tout certainly oh for sure you know i i wasn't as upset about <laughs> no nomad no land no i think we were we were no no, no. We were, for, for best director right but it was yeah. just the best picture that was just all wrong all wrong. Uh, but yes, in this in this field, Jane Campion is an overwhelming favorite. Let's get to our burning Philip question. David, which director would you choose to direct a film based on your life? Now, we have some powerhouses in this, David. We have Jane Campion, of course, uh, possibly oh, yeah. uh, in here, the favorite to win this year. Certainly Steven Spielberg, Kenneth Branagh for Belfast, Ryosuke Hamaguchi. I'm going to just follow your pronunciation and we'll both be wrong for Drive My Car. And of course, Paul Thomas, Thomas Anderson. Now, that would be an interesting interpretation. Yeah. So a lot of different Honestly, visions here. Where would you go? That's so tough. That's so tough because I was going to say Paul Thomas Anderson because his movies just floor me usually. Now, Licorice Pizza, maybe not so much, but it didn't floor me. Not in the way that uh, There Will Be Blood floored me. Uh, Steven Spielberg, like who doesn't love a Spielberg film? Of except course. West Side Story. It's, it's, I'd say that that's like the safest. <laughs> I'm like, that's the safest I'm like, I option. love Paul Thomas Anderson, but not Licorice Pizza. I love Steven Spielberg, but not West Side Story. Um, and Kenneth Branagh would probably bring the most truth to it. So, I mean, I guess him, I guess Kenneth Branagh. Can we, uh, I guess this is as good a place as any to start an argument. David, you are so wrong about West Side Story. Now, and here's why. I, you would have not found a person who was a bigger detractor of West Side Story. My grand, my It's like burned and ingrained in my family to love this film. I was the lone person. I was the black sheep of the family for not having liked this film. I've been in the musical on stage before. That's, I mean, there's a lot there, and I still do not like it. There's a lot about the foundational Broadway story of West Side Story that, uh, that one is doesn't translate from... 
Romeo and Juliet even to West Side Story, let alone within the Broadway film. I know they've even done re- revamps of it on Broadway to try and make it more palatable to a modern audience because it just is so surreal, unrealistic, what have you. That being said, West Side Story and and Steven Spielberg, what he did with this is he made it the most, the most palatable. What he did was a chopped episode. He was given pineapple, sardines, and and uh, mayonnaise and made a freaking breakfast entree out of it that no. just blew you away, man. No, like he he made he did as like the best job he could possibly yes, have he done with, that, yes. with that mayonnaise and sardines and what whatever. But it was still a horrible story. It's a horrible story. It, the, it's terrible. All the character, none of the characters are are relatable. They're all horrible people, except for the store owner. Like she's the only decent person in that story that I picked up on. Like they're all horrible, horrible to each other, horrible people. But if we, like, can with, it not with be no said? Empathy, like it's with no empathy and and like no no like no morals. Like it's just horrible. But we've seen that before. I mean, what what is what is the redeeming quality you understand within? Let's go back to the movie Joker. Where's the redeemable character there? Like even within Joker, the the main character you understand. Yeah, but yeah, but, but in with Joker, you're you're looking at a character you're not su- you're not supposed to like him. Well, who says but, you're supposed but, to like everybody Side in West Side Story? Story? You're going West there Side for the Story. dance and There's, singing. Yeah, but it's like, oh my god. In West Side Story, you're supposed to support this love story. You're supposed to watch these two kids and be like, they should be together. No, they shouldn't. It's horrible. He murdered her brother. Just... I, I understand that. And again, there are some foundational differences, but let's go. But now let's go to Titanic, my favorite film of all time. You're not so you, it doesn't matter whether or not you actually care about the romance in the middle. You have to buy that they are in romance. Well, you do romantically care about the with, romance because the two characters are very likable. They're very likable. And you and you like and you uh, you understand their romance and attraction to each other. But if you actually take a moment to think, oh, would they actually succeed outside of the boat? No, the tragedy is is the what if. Therefore, let's go to West Side Story. The tragedy of, of just everybody of, of death of flying around and there being a thing. There's there's a bigger message than it's than the story's viability, my friend. It's I'm not talking about its viability. It's just horrible. <laughs> we've seen horrible stories though it's before horrible. it's just it's unlikable it's unlikable fundamentally okay well we i not guess gonna, this I discussion know. is not going to end on this podcast i suppose uh, it, i i cannot believe that you're you're trying to tell me that this that this musical like there's anything it's better than like what you give it. it credit for that's what no, i'm fighting for i'm not, not saying <laughs> best we'll, we'll even get here now to best picture and, it, and it's nominated here it's but, there yeah God. And 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 so I'm just justifying its nomination ahead of time as I will take down one later on. So let's go ahead to the last category, Best Picture. Now, David, whom are the nominees? The nominees are Belfast, Coda, Don't Look Up, Drive My Car, Dune, King Richard, Licorice Pizza, Nightmare Alley, the Power of the Dog and West Side Story. Oh. <sighs> There's a couple blah, uh, uh, blah movies in here. I'm honestly like, for for whatever reason, the Academy has decided now it's going to nominate ten films. It's far yeah. too many. It was already eight, which is more than any other category gets, which is understandable. It's Best Picture, but ten is excessive. Let's let's go down the list. All right, Belfast definitely deserves the nomination. I think. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I think it is probably among the favorites, if not, I have it right now written down as my favorite. We'll see if my mind changes as we go through these. Uh, I, I think it should, it will be one of the favorites. It's not my, one of my favorites. It didn't, it didn't move me. Like it seemed to have moved so many people. Coda. Now Coda is, a, is, is packed full of great writing and great performances and great acting and, and like, just like heartfelt moments and. And it's a story that hasn't been told before, like, or at least it's it's a story in a context that hasn't been explored before. And I love that about it, but it falls into a lot of cliches. And so that pretty much excludes it for me from Best Picture. Don't Look Up was my favorite for a long time. I think it's a phenomenal film. If it wins, I'll be happy. Don't Look Up was so funny. It's unique. Uh, it's obviously Hollywood celebrating 
all of the biggest stars and bringing them together to to say like, look how crazy the world is right now and we need to change. Uh, I thought it was great. I, and if it wins, like, hooray, like, that'll be great for me. Like, I will, I will be happy with that. That being said, it maybe isn't the most isn't the most serious film and the Academy tends to lean on lean more towards serious films. Speaking of serious films, drive my car, the Japanese film. Again, I I don't need to say much more about it. It's again, it's a beautiful exploration of human grief and emotion and, and like just, ah, really, really, it's a very well-told story and it's fascinating. It's slow, but it's fascinating. Dune is a joke. Phil, join me here because I've been talking for a little while now. Dune is a joke of a nomination here, right? It really is. And I'll I'll say this is why, because it's not even an unenjoyable film, but let's take it in the context of something that is- I didn't really enjoy it. I'll say that, but but go on. Really? Okay. So let's assume that you, let's assume that you enjoyed it. You're just a person sitting in the film, uh, eating your popcorn, a normal blockbuster fest watcher, and you're watching the action and it's enjoyable, right? And it's an enjoyable film. Let's, let's go with that assumption. What makes it so bad though, in comparison to something else that is, that is a a presumptive two-parter, let's compare it to Endgame, where there's a story being told and where at the end, uh, spoiler alert, I don't know how you miss it if you actually care about it. But in the end, Thanos wins at the end of uh, not Endgame, excuse me, Infinity Wars. At the end of the the film, Thanos wins, and it's a really a, an exploration of the villain. It's an exploration of Thanos and his journey through it all. It's his, and it's what his si- story? It's his story. It's his story with the context of the other characters that we already have a history about. But it's really his story it has a beginning, a middle, and end. And by the end, you see what victory looks like, what the destruction is. You see all this. Why does that matter? Because in Dune, what they've done is that they wanted a pure adaptation onto the screen and in fairness the story dune is so massive to do it justice as we've seen before when the original film the original filmed adaptation of the book came out and they tried to crunch it all into one it doesn't work it comes across comical and jokes uh, jokes cool so i appreciate and i can i can empathize with the the thought of going a pure direct from word and page to film adaptation i can appreciate that where it falls flat though is when you take the book and go directly right in the middle a 500 page book and you end the, your film on page 250 whatever that possible number was for dune and where you end it you end up with an audience saying, that's it. It doesn't make sense. The journey is incomplete. Therefore, if we're going to go about a story as we did on West Side Story, the story itself is incomplete. There's no, it doesn't naturally rest. The pacing is incorrect because it doesn't feel like you went on a, on a real journey. Now, I'm sure once we see part two and that you can merge the two as one, then it'll make more sense. But where they added, where they ended it right in the middle is completely unsatisfying. You look at something again, one more example, Lord of the Rings, parts one, two, and three. They all were their own separate journeys, all worked together when you merge them all as a, as a one, co- one watch through. But that doesn't mean that separately, they all are their own film. They stand alone as a great film. Godfather part one, Godfather part two. This film, Dune, does not stand alone as a good film by itself. You, I guarantee you it will look a lot better once we see part two and can merge the two. Now, let me jump in there because I agree with everything that you said, except like I, I didn't even enjoy it because it also starts out. It comes in and it assumes you know what's going on in, in this universe. Like if you look at other big sci-fi universes, Star Wars, Star Wars, like it, it really... I don't know. I don't even know how to put this into words, but Dune just assumes that, you know, you know about this universe, that you understand the context of this universe. And maybe people who read the books do. But uh, and I know that I know people who have read the books who really enjoyed Dune. I didn't because I haven't read the books. And if you're going to make a movie out of books, you shouldn't you shouldn't expect your audience to have read the books before you watch the movie. So I didn't enjoy Dune at all. Uh, Let's move on. King Richard. Great story kind of typical biopic but very well very very well acted including from the 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 teenage actors great job uh however i just don't think it's quite it's not at the level of in my opinion what the best movies were like don't look up and drive my car so far licorice pizza very very great film amazingly directed wonderful production design color palette is just gorgeous it's a very pretty film to watch and it is very good some one acting performance i won't say who uh should i say who i don't know go ahead name names the, the kid seymour hoffman uh his ah, son yes. 
I didn't love his acting. And I thought the way that the film ended, it wasn't what I, it kind of went where everyone expected it to go. You know, it, should I say spoiler alert and, and talk about? Yes. Well, I, what I what I wanted to ask is I I haven't seen the film myself, so you, when you're asking for a spoiler alert, you're even asking me. So I I would say okay. no, but can, can, we, can we? I won't. Can we cloud it though? Can we cloud it though? In this, I do know and am aware of the of the controversial content within Licorice Pizza, the the relationship yes. between the two, sure. and that's what I want to ask you is is the acting. Did you feel like the acting had anything to do with that, with the uncomfortability of that situation? Because I know that that turns a lot of people off. No, I don't think so. I think I think art is art, and uh, it's telling a story, a perfectly valid story, uh, about something that felt feels very real. I'll just say that the, the 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 movie goes in a direction that I was ready for it to go in a different direction, and that's that's all I'll say. And and I was a bit disappointed that it went in the direction it went. Nightmare Alley is kind of very. Uh, Guillermo, Gu- uh, Guillermo del, del Toro. Toro. <laughs> Toro. Toro. Guillermo, sí. Guillermo del Toro. There yeah. we go. So uh, that guy, it's very him, and it was good. Again, like Belfast, everyone seems to love it. I, it didn't really touch me very. Like it wasn't. I mean, it's a very, very interesting film, and like, like spooky, but like, ah, eh, meh. I'm over I, it already. I want to say, yeah, I want to say it touched on spooky. It wasn't. It never got to where I wanted the film to go. So I, it might be more enjoyable on a second view through, which very rarely do mm. I, I feel that. But I think it would be more enjoyable now knowing where it goes and where it doesn't go. Because where I expected it yeah. to go, it didn't. And it always felt like it was losing a, a lot of my interest because of that. Because I was I was expecting it to go somewhere and then I was disappointed when it didn't. And also, like, it just sort of went one way and then another way, and it yeah. just sort of dragged on. Of, ah, well, I didn't love it. Power of the Dog. Great, great film. Oh, and, like, very, very interesting, like, incredible character work. And, like, I'll, I'll the sh- big shout out to Jane Campion, really, thinking about it now. Like, what she did with the, with the with the characters and the actors and the moments that she created were great. But it's a very slow film, not my favorite. And West Side Story, I won't even talk about. It was terrible. Uh, <laughs> so my favorites are Don't Look Up and Drive My Car. So it's got to be one of those for me. My favorite was probably Drive My Car, if I'm really honest. I want it to be Don't Look Up because that's a comedy and I love comedies and and I want a comedy to win. But in fairness, Drive My Car has to be my favorite. The favorite, I'm going to say Belfast. I'm going to say Belfast, but who knows? Belfast is the current number three top favored film, followed by Coda, but it's in strong contention with The Power of the Dog. Power of the Dog is only a minus 145 favorite, which again, I know uh, not everybody's into betting, but uh, that is only a slight favorite. The Power of the Dog, then Coda, then Belfast? That is correct. Those are the top three in that order. The Power of the Dog is a, is a heavy favorite against the field, but o- only a slight favorite against Coda, meaning that realistically, we could see a Coda wow. win here or Power of the Dog. Belfast is at plus 1,400, and it gets just way rather, worse from I'd there. rather Coda win just because... Oh man, it was a beautiful film. It was a beautiful yeah. film, and it, and it touched my and and I want to give a shout out because we're not talking about supporting actors, but Troy Kotzer, Kotzer, he plays the dad in Coda. Amazing great performance. performance. Great oh, love performance. It. Loved it. So good. He is my uh, my. I hope he wins for that. But uh, but yeah, and and then I want to say what what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, notable omissions were Parallel Mothers and. The worst person in the world should have been nominated for best picture. Both of them. Can I say that I, I, I am somebody who enjoys a good comedy. I, I just want to add this one more since, since we're having your favorites and everything else, but don't look up was not, in my opinion, didn't deserve to be nominated here. I get it. There's, there's a lot of heavy hitters and I can always respect a film that has the monumental task of juggling a tremendous ensemble cast. When you're talking about Leonardo DiCaprio, Meryl Streep, uh, friggin Jennifer, Aaron, Lawrence, Jennifer Jonah Lawrence, Hill. Jonah Hill, Tyler Perry, there's a huge oh, cast yeah. in this. There's a huge uh, who's who cast in here and actually making it palatable and we're not coming up with like New Year's Eve or Valentine's Day or whatever, some right, innocuous yeah, yeah. group thing and you're actually making a, a palatable film out of it. I, I have to applaud you. It's a, it's a monumental task. I, I will give you that. But I thought it was far too heavy-handed in its approach. I get it; it's a comedy. But I, when 
the moments fell flat to me. And I, after a while of just heavy handedness, hitting you over the head with it time and time again, the nails already all the way through the wood, my friend. Now you're just banging wood. It, it, it really, it, it started to lose its taste with me as the film went on, even though, yes, I got the message far greater than I did in other films. Let's switch over to The Power of the Dog. As great as I think that she deserves the best director for the, her work on this film, the film itself, man, I got to tell you, I got to be honest, it lost me. It lost me so early on. I get it. It's one of those artistic films that you're supposed to be high refined and, and have not only a cigarette, but a cigarette within yeah, one like of those pipes. Real patience for it. Dude, yeah. it is so snooty. So I, incredibly I'll say snooty. This, I, a Power of the Dog is like two hours, I think. It it was it more feels like way, four, man. It was way way closer to losing me than Drive My Car, which is a three hour film, and it's in Japanese, <laughs> so I was reading subtitles the whole time. So that says a lot. That Power of the lot. Dog should it win? Honestly, feels like a return to force for the Oscars, where where they will choose this random film that is just you have to be within a certain film. I, I don't think anybody would have seen this if it wasn't Oscar nominated. To be completely honest, it's right. so it's so snooty, and that's the best term that I can put on it. The Power of the Dog. I, I couldn't get behind it when I saw it. I said, "Yep, this is definitely an Oscar bait film because it just it completely oh, totally. lost me." But, uh, but so with yeah, that in again, mind, I I'm gonna I go end behind on this. It. Okay, I'm going to end on this. Okay, the the worst person in the world is worth watching, worth reading uh, Norwegian subtitles. It is probably my favorite film from 2021. You don't have to sell and me, man. Should, I love subtitles. I love it subtitles. Should it should have been nominated? It really should have. It's a tragedy. It's not. It's I don't even. And Parallel Mothers wasn't even nominated for international film, which baffles me because it was so good. Wow. Okay. Parallel Mothers. Yeah. Those two films really, really snubbed. I, out of the ones that I've seen and out of this list that I, I would, uh, I would say for the favorite, I honestly, I too would go Coda. I, the ending goes to be somewhat predictable, I think is where we can say with, without giving yeah. too much away. But honestly, with the journey that it takes you on, I would have been disappointed had it not. So Yes. Let's go with let's go with we both hope that Coda wins out of what should be a close race between the two. And is it, is let's, it so so bad to have a happy ending in a in a in a in an Oscar nominated film? Well there you go. Spoiler Can't we have alert. Some happy endings? But agreed. Agreed. I, I'd say it's it's similar to King Richard in that regard. Let's go to the last Philip question here. Again, out of this field, David, which of these films would win the most likely to be shown to a girl? You are trying to get with. <laughs> Again, we're we're going the power uh, of the dog. If this you know, wins, I swear to God, I'll slap you. Coda, yeah, no, Belfast, West Side Story, <laughs> hmm? King no. Richard, Dune, Licorice Pizza, Don't Look Up, Drive My Car, or Nightmare Alley. It depends on the girl, but I think in general, I would lean on comedy. I'm not going to show her Drive My Car, <laughs> this three hour <laughs> Japanese film. She's probably going to be like. Oh my God, what a, what a pretentious asshole. <laughs> so I'm probably going to go with Don't Look Up or Coda because uh, because they are I, one's funny and one's heartwarming and cute. So I'm Big go mistake, my friend. You had, you had the golden apple right in your hand and you didn't take a bite of it. It is Drive My Car, by far and away Drive My Car. And here's why, if you're trying to <laughs> get with a girl, you oh, could care less what happens in the background. I don't care if they're speaking Spanish. I don't care actually, if they're speaking Dutch. That's actually the best point of all is that they're speaking something that doesn't interrupt the flow of the mo motion of the notion. And if something's happening true. on there and you're trying to distract from it, you just go and say, hey, should we just make our own entertainment and then nothing in a movie nothing interrupts you during the action my friend the movie literally opens with with naked people <laughs> so, there you go set the mood uh, right at the I top say, all, also licorice pizza has probably of all these 10 movies has the the most sort of sexual energy even though like, there's no sex actual sex but it has loads of sexual energy it's licorice simmering pizza. beneath the surface it's early 70s so i mean it kind of has to have sexual energy course well thus concludes our oscar stravaganza thank you the for oscar joining spectacular. us oscar spectacular thank you so much for joining us another year in we certainly enjoyed it we certainly are uh, <laughs> flipping our bow ties and excitement for it let's get along to uh to this next part god i love the oscars god i love it this episode of powwow podcast is sponsored by sides meet sides 
S-I-D-E-S, an app that helps you take the law into your own hands. Turn ordinary agreements into binding contracts in seconds. Then if a dispute arises, sides will step in to resolve it for you. What, Phil, that one, that was supposed to be my line. What did we agree to in the contract? I, I don't know. I, I guess we can use sides to settle this dispute because each dispute costs a small one-time fee. And if you win, which I will, it's all awarded back to you. Sign up now and get 16% off for a limited time only. Okay, so we're doing Mad Libs this week as our mini segment and uh, well, let's just uh let's just start off. Phil, do you want to do you want to go first or should I go first? I'll go first, but what does that mean? Uh, okay, I'll read mine first. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> okay, or you'll give me the words first. Yeah, sounds right. good. What do I need to give so you? So first, I need a noun. Peanut butter. Okay, peanut butter. All right, now I need a verb. Jiggling. Okay, jiggle. Jiggle, that too. Yes, you're right. And I need another noun. Penelope Cruz. <laughs> Can it be a proper noun? Uh, sure. <laughs> Phenomenal. Okay. All right. And an adjective, please. Crispy. All right. Directions to get to the beach. First, you want to head down this street and take a right. When you get to the second peanut butter, take a left. Continue down that road until you've gone past three traffic lights. Jiggle your way up the big hill until you reach Penelope Cruz. Oh. Follow the path <laughs> all the way down to the beach. If you reach the ocean and get all crispy, you've gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. All right. I need a name, David. Uh, a name of like a person, like a Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, wow. Okay. An item you wouldn't want to get wet. An item? Um, my headphones. A pet name you would have for a car. The Poop Mobile. And finally, an activity you've seen recently in a movie you would never want to actually do. An activity I've seen recently in a movie that I wouldn't actually ever want to do myself. <laughs> Does chemotherapy count? Sure, let's do it. <laughs> okay. I mean, that, that's something that I saw in a movie recently <laughs> and I wouldn't want to do it, so. All right. Here we go. Leonardo DiCaprio went to the laundromat because he had to do laundry. But the reason Leonardo DiCaprio was doing laundry at a laundromat was because they tried to wash their headphones by mistake and it clogged their washer at home. So now they had to go out and about in public and they loaded a load and went to insert their quarters, but realized they forgot their wallet all the way back home. He looked around and saw this gorgeous girl reading something and he mustered up the courage to go over, over and say, Hey there, Poop Mobile. I forgot my wallet. Is there any way I can borrow some quarters? The girl looked him up and down and said, You can't borrow them, but you can earn them. Interest peaked. Leonardo DiCaprio became alert and said, Oh yeah? Doing what? The girl then got up and pulled Leonardo DiCaprio in real close and whispered in his ear, By doing my chemotherapy. Leonardo DiCaprio gulped and replied, Yes, Poop Mobile. I would love to. <laughs> she gave him the quarters, and Leonardo DiCaprio began walking back real smooth when a loud noise came from the washing machine area, and Leonardo DiCaprio realized he forgot to take out his backup headphones from the wash. <laughs> God. And of course, as always, we have a game to play, and with the game, we bring on a very special guest, a member of my own, my own bloodline, my <laughs> brother, my brother in arms, my brother in in brotherhood. Uh, David, it's Luca. they've already known me. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. Yes, your actual brother. Yes, so, hello, hello Luke. You. <laughs> yes, hello, hello, uh, hello, Luke. This is my How brother from the same mother. From the same mother, that mother who makes bread and makes fish and chips, apparently, from what I hear off air. Uh, Luke, welcome to back to the show, I should say. 
Uh, it is always a pleasure to have you. But it's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Yes. But being uh, David Hoffman's younger brother, we still have questions for you, myself more so than David Hoffman. So I will start by giving you the first of our two questions that I get. And then uh, Hoffman will ask you another question. But although I should say now, David, I think I had this problem last time, but I will get better on it. I swear. Luca, would you prefer to be eaten alive by zombies or get bitten by a zombie and feel yourself slowly change into one? Oh, that's that's quite a difficult one. I would probably say get bitten and turn into one. Honestly, I feel I feel like getting ripped apart by zombies would just be terrible. Like it's like one of the worst ways but to at go. At least it would be quick. I mean, yeah, but like what a terrible way to go. Fair I mean, enough. Turning into a zombie, like depending on what like t- iteration, type of zombie version. yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. There, there are there are good zombies and there are bad zombies out. Well, there's there's more favorable zombies. Depends on the movie, right? Depends on the movie, depends on the iteration. I mean, what if you're a big bulbous zombie and you are just a skinny old rail to get to that whole puffed out p- pufferfish version? That's got to be a painful process. Oh, yeah. Oh, daddy. All right. All right so Luke, you want to uh, Luke, you want to be bitten. Yeah. You'd rather be bitten, and, be bitten and do the slow turn. Luke, uh, this might be a tough question for you because I know you haven't been to the been much to the movies recently. What is the best 2021 film that you saw? This being mm. our Oscar preview episode, we uh, it was a, it was a must ask question. <laughs> the one, of ones that I've seen, probably Jackass, <laughs> Jackass Forever, there, <laughs> because that's really there like, is so much genitalia in that film, an unbelievable was. amount. I <laughs> there by was. the it's amazing how at first you're vividly aware of that fact, and by the end you're just numb to it. You're absolutely numb to it. If you want body positivity, go watch that film because there is no way you walk out of that the same person you walked in going to, having never seen any film of the franchise. Let me just check if Jackass was nominated for any Academy Awards, any Oscars. Maybe uh, for no, stunts. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't nominated for any Academy Awards. Shocker. I'm surprised, Luke, that you didn't. Uh, you might. I thought you might have chosen Spider-Man. No, I thought about Batman, but I also haven't seen Batman yet. But I know that it's really that good. That would have been incredibly bold to pick a movie that you have not seen. I, I don't know that if, if we'd have seen anybody who'd, who's ever been so bold as to do that. But bravo to you. Uh, my last question here before we begin our game. Luke, what is the worst sports injury you have seen in person? Ooh, OK. So about like a year ago, I was playing for my Dutch club. Playing like soccer. Teammate. Yeah. Football football with the with the foot and he got like i don't know it was really like in dutch football it's more hit the player and then go for the ball instead of like go for the ball so right. it's very rough and um my team and this team got pretty heated like it was a pretty intense game and one of their players like did like a flying kick almost into another one and he like hit him in the knee and it like bent completely Ooh. It, it, it was it that's was the wrong nasty. way i'm guessing yeah, to the side. It was like to almost like a right. It was almost like a right angle. It was. Mm. It was actually terrible. Yikes! <laughs> we, Phil, it's funny you asked this question because what was it last last week? You were saying how how uh, injuries and and bones like and breaking and and things sticking the wrong way is something that makes you want to yak. <laughs> Even right now, I'm I'm a little queasy. I just I felt in my duty since I knew that you're very active, Luke, to to ask you. So I, I felt more obligated than anything. But I'm Ugh. good good for you and bad for him. Oh God, yeah, it was it was not a pretty picture. One of my one of my rugby teammates at university once dislocated his knee in a in a rugby game, and he was just sort of lying there waiting for the ambulance to show up in the field, and uh, and his knee was sort of just like deta- It was like it was there were no like breaks to the skin but his knee was sort of like his lower half of his leg was hanging off of the upper half it was they were oh, no longer God. connected <laughs> yeah, oh. it was pretty it's pretty gross all right let's move on to the game and phil this is your game so why don't you uh why don't you explain it to us yes this is my game and you might be quite aware of this game if you have watched or seen social media within the past month at the very least as everybody is loving to post their wordle scores so uh, we are joining the wordle craze 
if nothing else, just in this game, and, and we'll make it a little more audio friendly for us all. We are all aware, and for those of us who are not aware of Wordle, it is getting five guesses to figure out a five letter word. And now uh, we're not going to be getting five guesses. We'll get as many as necessary, but the, the concept will still apply. We will be trying to ascertain a five letter word that's one of either me or, or uh, David have come up with uh, for the other two. Now, the word can be anything. There's no theme today. And as such, I, I thought it best if, if we really didn't have a theme uh, for it. But the game is Wordle, and you will have either a chance, if you're a participant, to either get a letter, a correct letter that resides within the word, or a one-worded clue about what the word itself is. Now, after each clue or word given, each participant is given one guess. After that, it is tagged over to the other person. So do be careful. There is some strategy here. We will keep going until somebody gets the correct word. Now, Luke, who would you care to go against first? Who would you care to face off against? Mm, I think I want to go against my brother first. Okay, that means that I will be hosting us for the first part. And as such, let me get pen and paper ready for score. Here we go, guys. Uh, Luca, we'll go to you first. And remember, one thing to recall, if I give you a letter, that doesn't necessarily mean it's in the first place of, of the word. It can be placed wherever it possibly can. So uh, with that in mind, Luke, would you care for a letter or a clue of our first word? Let's go with a letter to begin a with. A letter. Your letter is E. E. There is okay. an E in this. There might be even two. I'm just giving you one letter. And I just want to clarify because I don't think it was said. All these all these words are five letter words. All these words oh. are five letter words. Okay. All right. So all right. one letter within the the word is an E. David, how about you? Well, doesn't Luca get a guess? He does if he wants. Do you No, I don't think I'm gonna guess yet. Yeah, yeah. They, no, I have no idea. No okay. need this early. Go uh, ahead. I would like David. A letter. A letter. How about a D? A D. Any I guesses? I would like to guess okay. dread, as in that... dreadlocks, or I dread Ooh. the thought. Wow, that is incorrect. Let us go to Luke. <laughs> <laughs> can I get a clue? This yes, you can. The clue is simple. Simple. Hmm. Any guesses, Luke? No, I, I, I have Nothing. no idea. That's fine. That's fine. We're still Simple. early. Uh, Hoffman. I'm sorry, David. Okay. <laughs> I, I will have That's to get That's the only that. clue, right? There's that only one the... clue? Oh, no, there's multiple clues. You oh, okay, get... so I can keep asking for clues. You okay. can keep asking I, for clues. I would like a clue. Next clue is sliced. Diced? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is incorrect. Okay. We go back to you, Luca. Get another letter. Your letter is... R. R. I have no idea. He has no idea what the clues R, E, and D have as the known letters in this word, and the clues, uh, the clues as said thus far are simple and sliced. We go back to you, David. Okay, I would like another letter. Another letter. We're going to go with an A. A. This is the last letter that you can get, though. Okay. Nice. You have four out of the five. <laughs> oh. oh, man. I don't know. Um, Once again, the letters, <clears throat> the letters you yeah, have I available don't know. to you. I don't have a guess. He yeah. doesn't even have a guess. The letters he has available to him right now is E, D, A, R, with the clues simple and sliced. He, he passes on his guess. We go back to you, Luca. You have a chance here. A real chance here. You will need to take a clue. Yeah, I'll take another clue. Yeah. All right. One more clue. Here we go. Yeast. Yeast is your clue. I already knew before this clue as well. It's bread. It is bread. So Luca takes the, the wow, early lead. Wow, so lead. close with dread. <laughs> Very close. I was actually, I was filled with it when you guessed bre uh, dread. So but with the first point on the board, Luca takes an early lead, but we have four more to go. David, we will start with you on this next one. A letter or a clue, sir? I would like a letter. A letter. How about R? All right. R. Uh, All right. Let's just... Uh, do you have a guess? Would you care to roses. saunter? 
Roses. How beautiful. No, that is not the the letter. That would be very impressive, though. Hey, you never Look, know. <laughs> you never know. You you get a first guess for a reason. Luca? I'll take another letter as well. Another letter. We're going to go with an I. I. Hmm. R and an I. Any guesses? Ribs. That is not the the, the word. Also but four guess. letters. Ribs. That's true. Ribs. Sorry, R-I-B-S I just, would, just... would only have four. Yes, but, but good guess, I suppose. David? <laughs> <laughs> all right i would like a clue a clue the first one is coal mm. coal any guesses fires no but a very good guess uh luca we go back to you with the clues r i and coal mm, can we get another letter we can the next one would be n N, as in nugget. Any guesses? No, not at this time. Not at this time. David, we are back to you after a pass. I would like a clue. A clue. Next one would be dragon. Dragon. I had a guess. I had a guess, and then you had to go say (laughs) dragon. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Once more for the audience, we have... What are the letters you have available? I want to make sure I don't give it away. R-I-N. R I N with the with the clues coal and dragon, right? Ah, oh, man. Uh, no guess yet. No, no guess. guess. All right, we go back to Luca. We get uh, one more letter. <laughs> Your last letter available to you will be T. T. Okay. Um. Uh, train. <sighs> That is the word. That is the word. That's what I was going to say the previous round. I just thought like dragon, like, and then it, it just occurred to me. How to train your your dragon. dragon. Yes. Yes. God. I was going to say train. I just, I just saw T R I I N. I have it set up perfectly to spell train. I saw call and I was like, I have no idea. I might as well just say train. (laughs) Well, there you go. Sometimes the setup. I was going to say train. (laughs) I thought that there was a good clue. I thought it was a good clue. It throws you off, but at the same time, it still makes sense. So I'm glad. Other, other clues would have been ride ticket or express. Let's move on to the third one. Luca gets to be first on this one. Uh, where would you like to go, Luke? How many are we doing? Five or three? I have five words. We are through two well. of them okay. thus far. Let's uh, start with the letter. A letter. We will start with G. 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 Um, gangs? No. Uh, we go to mm. you, David. Uh, um, I'd like a clue, please. A clue. The first clue is blinded. Blinded. Okay. I'm going to guess light. Ooh, and he gets it on the second attempt. Yes, that is true. That is incredibly true. So now we have a tie, or sorry, we have a closer game. Two to one. At two to one in Luke's favor. But we do start off here with David, who would be very impressive if you can get it off the first guess here. But where would you like to go? Letter or I would like a clue. clue. A clue. Off of word number four. Here we go. A clue. Crown. Okay, queen. No. Luke. Let's get another hint. Another clue. Interesting. We will go with rock. Rock. Um, is the letter sword? The, the word is not sword, no. Oh, yeah. uh, but, 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 but close. But uh, David, back to you. With two clues I... and no letters. I would like a letter, please. A letter. E. E for you, gentlemen. So right now we have the clues as a letter E is in the word. And the get and the clues are crown and rock. I just guess stone? No. No. Good guess. Uh, Luke, where would you like to go here? We have another hint. <laughs> a hint, yes. The hint would be topaz. Topaz. I have O? Mm. No, I have no idea. No idea. Let me go back to you, David. I would like another letter, please. Another letter. How about an L? Jewel? 
Yes, and it is all tied going into the fifth and final word. Jewel, oh. very good pull there, David. Very good pull. Sense. I read Crown and Rock and thought like Sword in the Stone. <laughs> I was, I was. That was when I, I said Stone. I was sort of along the same lines. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But it, then, uh, then it, it clicked with Topaz. The Topaz just sort of gave it away. <laughs> there we go. All right, guys. Last one. We go to Luke for this final one, yes? If we're going still in order? Uh, yes, because I believe I just went to yeah. David. I believe. Yeah. With yes. Jewel. Yes. Okay, sure. here we go. Here we go. Luke, letter um, or clue? Start with the clue. Clue. A laugh. The clue is laugh. Mm. Um, funny? No, that is not the word. David? <laughs> Uh, I, I would like a clue as well, please. A clue as well. Savannah. Savannah? Savannah. <laughs> Savannah? Lions? <laughs> no. Okay. Luke? Um, can we get a letter, please? A letter, yes, absolutely. How about an E? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> uh, field? No. Good guess, though. David? Again, this is yeah, for, <laughs> a to, letter, to build please. attention. Yes, to build <laughs> attention with this letter. I think I know it, letter. but I would like a letter, please. The letter I'm about to give you is H. Hyena. <laughs> yes. Wow. Very nice. Yeah. Very as soon nice. as I said lion, I was like, wait, hold on a second. Lions. I said La lions. Yeah. I was like, hold La on a second. Laugh. Laugh. So David, with the last second three streak to take the lead, to take the victory, to defeat Luke oh. for the first time in this game, in this powwow podcast history. I'm pretty I'm so sure yeah, sorry, Luke. Luca beat me last time. He did. He? he certainly did. Yeah. Uh, I'm so sorry, Luke. You're going to have to live with the shame until next you come on. Yeah, I'll, I'll get him next time. All right. Well, I beat you last time. You're going to get Phil this time. Well, we should not Counting hope so, on you. but... but. All right, David, All your right, iteration my game. of the game. Yes. Okay, so we started with Luca, so I'll start with Luca. Would you like a uh, a clue or a letter? Start with the clue again. Paper. I don't know yet. I'll take a letter. H. H. You have a guess, Phil? Halves? <laughs> no. <laughs> the pl the plural of half is halves with a V, which would be I a six-letter word. I, I didn't know if there was a royal British... Uh... No. British spelling. <laughs> okay, <right>. Luke. No. <laughs> Can we get another clue, please? Another clue he wants. Clean. No idea. H. All right. Can I get a letter, please? W. Wheel. I know that's not it, but... No, not wheel. No. Sorry. Luke, a clue or a letter? Can you get another letter? T. T, like, tea you drink? You asked for a letter, the letter T. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like T, as in, yes, that's the letter I, the, like T you drink. I have no idea. What about another clue, please? Another clue. Snow. Width. <laughs> <laughs> nope, not width. <laughs> Luke, a clue or a letter? A letter, please. All right, this is your last letter. Yeah. E. Would you like the letters again? H, W, T, and E. <laughs> I don't know why this is so hard. <laughs> I, I, I think I have a guess, kind of. Okay, e. go on. Go ahead. Wheat? <laughs> yes! There's nothing else. Yes! <laughs> no, <laughs> no uh, not give, me, give me a clue, but I, I know where this is. Oh, yeah, think of another clue. All right. Um, <laughs> all right, Phil. Your last clue is blank. the 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 word is white. The word is white. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Not wheat. <laughs> not wet. Makes, not makes, wheel. Or, not wet. Or wet. Wet would have been the or other wet. one, possibly. Or what? I suppose. That's Anyways, four, at best, that's four letters. But oh, okay, sure. moving on to that's a point for Phil. Yes, to zero for Luke. Let's keep it this way. All right. It shall not All right. Question two. We start with you, Phil. Would you like a clue or would you like a letter? I would love a letter, please, David. All right. Your letter is L. L. Yes. 
What about laugh? It's not laugh. Damn it's not it. Laugh. Well, that sucks. All right, Luke. Let's have a clue. A clue. Agriculture. Agriculture. No guess yet, I don't think. Okay, no guess. Phil, letter or clue? A uh, clue. Grass. I, I no guess. Okay, no guess. Luke, letter or clue? Letter, please. D. Well, I had a, a guess, but uh, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> D. Yeah, no, I have no idea. Okay. D. Phil. Mm -hmm. A clue, please. Flat. Moldy? <laughs> not moldy. Dang it. <laughs> All right, Luke, a, a clue or a letter? A letter, please. F. Oh. Once again, I had a guess, but now I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I have no idea. Give me a clue, please. A clue. You're really pushing me on these clues. How about sting? Say sting. You remember me. I remember you. As we <laughs> walk that a blue. <laughs> I'm gonna say grays. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh is the is the word field. It is yeah, field. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's uh point two for Phil. Woo! Now, All right. now let's not do what Luke did last game. Uh, you're 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 allowed two points, no, Luke, I'm but, worried. but only one more. But I'm I, worried about this word. I'm worried it's gonna take you guys a long time okay. to get this one. All right. Uh we're gonna give it a go. All right. Uh this time we start with you, Luke. What do you what would you like? Like a hint, please. Canyon. Grand. Nope. Nice, nice job well, though. Uh let's go with a letter, please. G. Highs? No. H I G H S. It's no. <laughs> yes, I know, I know, but you, I, I saw the disdain in your face and I, I wanted to defend my word choice. It, it okay. It, Luke, a uh, a get a clue or a letter? A letter, please. Another G. Ooh. You gotta stop doing this to me. Every time I think I have a guess, <laughs> you just say something and then uh. <sighs> I have no idea. Yeah, we're not there yet. Phil. Uh a clue, please. River. Yeah, I mean duh. Uh uh. Wow, no guess. No guess. All right, Luke. Can we get one more letter? Uh yeah, you have you can get two more letters. Not well, right now you can get one. Uh how about an R? What if I had said another G? <laughs> <laughs> R. R. Uh-huh. No idea. Okay, Phil. Letter. Oh. So our letters are G, G, R, O, and our clues are canyon and river. Correct. Oh, man, I can tell that Luke has it. That's that's so disappointing. Yeah, I, I, th I, think, I think I might know it. I, I, won't, I won't hold it out any longer. I don't know. Okay, Luke, uh, what would you like? Another letter, please. Uh, no no more letters. Now, so that was right. Yeah, no, no, that's right. That's right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Another uh, <laughs> another clue. Another hint, I guess. All yeah. right. Uh, God, this is a hard one to come up with hints for. Or uh, I can just guess it because I'm pretty sure I know it. I'll say crocodile, but don't don't I don't. It's kind of an abstract <laughs> hint. <laughs> um, is it gorge? Gorge. Oh yes. wow. <laughs> gorge. Wow. <laughs> how, I was worried how, about this word. How did the crocodile get in there? Yeah, cro um, crocodiles I was often you often find crocodiles in a gorge. Oh, okay, in like, like Indiana Jones, yeah, but like exactly there you go. <laughs> Mostly in no, Louisiana. Louisiana. But either way, okay. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Fair enough. All right, so I now hold a two to one lead. Yes, two and, to one lead, and it comes back to me. It comes back to you. We're let's, starting with you this time. Let's go where I normally start. Let's go with the letter. All right, a B. <laughs> hey baby. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Any guesses? What about beats? It's not beats. Okay. Luke. Get a hint, please. Metal. Um, bronze. 
Wait, no, that's too many letters. No, yeah, that's too many letters. That's six letters. Wow, I was about to say nope, that was that was incredible. If if you'd have gotten that, uh, let's uh, go with uh, a letter, please. All right, how about an O? Any guesses, Phil? Lobes, <laughs> metal ones? No. <laughs> Luke, a clue or a letter? A letter, please. How about an R? Boron. No, also not a not a metal. I don't think. Boron. Isn't it an no. alkaline metal? I don't. No, I can't remember now. But no, not boron. You know the letters. I'm not giving them to you in order, right? Necessarily. Yeah, you no. could. You could. Well, I could be. I could be. But oh yes, my turn. Uh, let's go with a. Oh, let's go with a letter. All right, another O. Oh. You really are almost spelling out boron at this point. Yeah, really. <laughs> I want to spell some some sadistic version of Ruby, but that's not it. That's not it. Uh, I don't have a guess right now, on as as pathetic okay. as that seems. All right, Luke. Can we get another uh, clue, please? Electricity. Oh, thank God that didn't help him either. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Electricity. I know it doesn't fit, but boring. <laughs> boring. <No. laughs> He's so boring, we can't uh, no, even spell I, it. <laughs> I have no, no idea. It's kind of like moron, but boring. <laughs> uh, uh, what's, uh, what's a clue here, David? All right, another clue. I love how he had so much faith in us that he only brought two clues to the table. That That, that really says a lot. <laughs> No, it's I'm literally thinking of all these clues on the spot, every single one so yeah. far. Okay. okay. I'm going to say program. Program. So once more, our letters given are B, O, R, another O, and our clues are metal, electricity, and program. I I don't have a guess. Okay, Luke. You gotta have to choose clue. And you're going to get it on this one, I dare say. Uh, clue? Dance. Oh. Again, I'm glad that he didn't get it. I, I, yeah. I, 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 I'm going to get it on this one. I, yeah. I, I don't think I am. I can't believe you guys aren't getting it. <laughs> Somebody listening right now is yelling in their car. It's freaking blank. It's yeah, this. Obviously. <laughs> Right, I, Any guesses, Luke? You gotta have something. No, no idea. Oh my god! The double How O is throwing me off. Another? I don't know about you, Luke, but the double O is yeah, throwing me off. O's. Lots of words have two O's. Yes, but none of them fit. <laughs> where I'm like metal, electricity. Uh, what's another clue, David? Oh god. Okay, I gotta think of another clue. Oh my. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, he just thought of it, but you're already yeah, he already on my turn. Of it. <laughs> oh, good, good. I still have a second. Oh, man. <laughs> if this is what I think it is, I don't know how I didn't get this earlier. Automatic. You gotta have something, Phil. I'm glad you don't, but you, you gotta. <laughs> come on. Oh, this is so stupid. If I give this up. <laughs> <laughs> Program, damn. I mean, you never know. To I could make be the wrong game more well. interesting. He could be wrong. He could be wrong, it. but I doubt it. If he has a guess that actually fits, it, the chances are that he has it. Uh, <sighs> so, Burrow, I, I don't have a guess. <laughs> <laughs> Automatic. So, I, no. yeah. It's um, Robot. It is robot. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, what 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 clicked for you, Luke? Could, was it automatic that got it for you? Um, no, he got it before no, that. I, I've I've been I have it written out as Boro. So, so do I. Yes. Been, yeah, I've I've been tackling it like that, and then I just put the R at the front because I was like, hmm, the B isn't really working. Yeah. Right. And no, then it, it just made sense. Okay, so we have a a two way tie. <sighs> it two. is it is two points each. Wait. And we move on to the last word. Luke, we start with you. What would you like? God, that's so depressing. Let's have a clue, please. Abs. Me? Jesus. <laughs> Abs. Um, uh, strong. Not strong. Strong is too many letters. Six letters. That is also true. <laughs> what about strong with an apostrophe? Strong. 
<laughs> Anyways, oh, uh, what, yeah. What's what, what's a uh, what's a letter, David? All right, a letter P. You wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what wouldn't I do? Phil? Uh, I. I, I I, I won't I won't go there. Uh let's see. <laughs> pushy? <laughs> Not pushy. <laughs> Is that you with a lisp or or were you just saying pushy? <laughs> <Push right. up. laughs> Is that you doing a Sean Connery impression? Oh yeah. Oh I love push. <laughs> love people who are push. All right, anyways, go ahead there, Luke. Let's get another letter, please. Another letter. K. Carps. <laughs> no, I don't know what that would have to do with abs, but but no. Uh, what's a clue? Wood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have such a dirty mind. I try Any not guess? to. I try not to. Um... Pinky? No. <laughs> Not Pinky. Luke. Can we have another clue, please? Another clue. Board. As in B-O-A-R-D, not B-O-R-E-D. Plank. Damn it! No! Yes! No! <laughs> yeah! Wow! Oh the come from behind victory. Wow, that's that's both our games started out 2-0 and then ended up with the other with the the person behind coming back and winning 3-2. That's insane. Luca. The, uh, the, wow. The board. Can I just say the board so was a bit proud. on the nose, my friend. A bit mother freaking on the nose. From, from the what clues, else would you have said? For, uh, what, what else could I have said? I could have said ship. Like pirate ah, ship. That's a good one. Thank that's a you. Good one. I could have said so many, especially when our robot clues were metal, electricity, program, <laughs> dance, automatic. What we get for, for here is abs, wood, and board. <laughs> board gives it to us. It's all right, Luke. You're you're great. You're fantastic. Ah, oh, that's so... <laughs> no. Oh, jeez hey, Louise. Bro, you should have gotten robot earlier. I'm not going to give I you have gotten any robot. credit for that. I should have gotten robot. I will agree with this. Oh, God, that is so depressing. All right. Wow. What oh. fun. <laughs> Slow, but but uh hope you guys are guessing along with us as you listen to this driving uh, down the freeway or or oh, in the shower. God, that was on your painful. Run. Oh. <laughs> it was painful for Phil. What victory, joy and victory for the Hoffman household. Uh, we will be celebrating popping champagne tonight, Phil, while you cry swallow to my sleep. tears. Yes, that's what I'll be dining yes, on tonight. Yeah. All right, Luke. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, now that since you're still uh, younger than David Hoffman, what are you looking forward to most being young? <laughs> <laughs> what a question. <laughs> while I'm young? While you're young. You want to break something I and guess... heal incredibly fast? Is that appealing to you? I was going to say uh, have a lot more holiday time. That That's true. That is true. That is enjoyable. Enjoy it while you can. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, thank you All so right. much for Thanks joining for us. On, Luke. David will uh, so be, be along me. shortly to uh, to shake your hand like a gentleman and, and everything else. But let's get along to the rest of the episode after this scoreboard. With that loss, I am now tied at three and three. And with that win, David joins me tied three to three as well. Woo. There we go, Ooh. gentlemen and ladies. Let's get to some slapping. My song of this week is Everything Has Its Place by Young Mister. Good song. I, good vibe. Have you heard this? No, I am amazed that you didn't pick a movie this week of all weeks. You Do, do you want me to? Do you want me to? I can. No, no, no. You do you, man. You okay. do you. Okay. I'm always inclined for music, man. It's it's the movie I honestly forget. But I mean, I get I get that, but I mean, it's Oscar week. I know, <laughs> I know. Now that you say something, I I, I actually wish I, I had picked a movie. So it's but it's all right. It is set in stone. We're, we'll move on. I'll remify it next week. You'll you'll rem <laughs> remify it. I'll rectify it? it and remedy it next week by remifying it. Thank you, David. Okay. Uh, re <laughs> remedy, rectify, remify. You also came up with like, jo you came up with a word earlier, like joke, jokesy or something. All right. Uh, my That Slaps is a movie, of course. 
And, uh, you know, it had to be either the worst person in the world, which will probably come next week, or Parallel Mothers. I chose Parallel Mothers because I saw it first. So, so, so I chose Parallel Mothers. It's an amazing performance by Penelope Cruz and uh, all the other actors in, in this film. Uh, it's just, just an amazing film. So please watch it. That slaps. Well, before we let you guys go, we have a few thank yous to throw out. Uh, first of all, to Cass and Crossland and to Jake Corlang for the music that you hear on this show. Thank you to Tara Amstutz and Josh Hans for their wonderful contributions as well. Could not do it without you guys. Thank you. And thank you to the world of film for making this episode a necessity yes. among the powwow repertoire, the powwow community uh, history books. Yes. And we appreciate you, the listener, for listening to this episode as well as every other episode that you've had to listen to. Please uh, spread the word. Tell us your tell your friends about us and let them know we are on Spotify. We are on Apple Podcasts. We are on uh, we are on Google Podcasts. We're just about everywhere where you find podcasts. Oh, well, except for Pandora, because uh, screw you, Pandora. And the winner for Best Actress is Diana Argon for her role in Bear. Bear.